Well, welcome once again, wherever you're watching. Give us a shout out if you're watching at 701 in our second location. Uh, I need to at first quickly just apologize on behalf of uh, myself, me, myself, and I. Um, I sent out the wrong link on the website initially. So if you signed up really fast Wednesday at 4 p.m., both links from the website led you to the upper room, which I apologize if you were trying to sign up here. But it's kind of fun because the upper room filled up in like 20 minutes. And then some of you who don't usually get in here were able to get in, I think. So um, if it's about being around people, then up the upper room. I was there a few weeks ago. It is a good vibe over there when it's full. Because this building is huge, and so to make it feel full is kind of, you got, you know, it's hard to do. But over there, I walked in, I was like, okay, okay. All right, so, so don't not come because you're like, oh, I'm not in the main one. Sometimes that one's even got some better, uh, there's some old wells that have been dug across the street if you don't know our history. We were in church over there for years doing upper room, doing services, and you come back to it, more even mentioned it, and you feel that old well being dug up again. Wells of revival. So I'm telling you, whether you're in here or over there, these are great places to be. So I think we're at capacity in both locations today, which is amazing. 2021. Come on, everyone, give yourself a pat on the back. You made it. You made it to 2021. Sometimes, you know, I think, I think we didn't know it would look like this. You know, at the beginning of every year, every preacher kind of gets up and says what they think the new year is going to look like. I don't know if everyone said it was going to look like this. Um, I know there was a lot about 2020 vision and seeing things you haven't seen before and seeing things clearly. I think we did see some things we've never seen before, some things maybe more clearly than we've ever seen them before. But it probably wasn't what we thought. But who's ready for a better 2021? I'm watching on Facebook, so again, if you're online, um, send me out some comments. Dan's watching, Sean's watching, Dennis says, hi, Barry. Welcome, Barry. Margaret Lee, thanks for watching with us. Kimberly Laliberti said amen. So I'll be joining in online. So do respond when I ask you to uh, encourage me as well to know you're watching and paying attention. Um, in some ways, I felt like this as I was meditating for not only this service, but the series starting up, uh, that it was kind of like Charles Dickens said when he said, it's the best of times and it was the worst of times. Come on, that's what it kind of felt like as we started 2020 and like, you know, giving words about clear vision and seeing like we've never seen before. And on a personal level, my wife and I went to Pastor Dwayne White's conference in Denton, Texas. And there were some amazing ministers there, Bishop Miller and some other ones. And we, our friends from California joined us that we hadn't seen in a while. And God gave some words and we were stirred up. And then the week after, we hosted Koinonia Conference with Jim and Shelley. And I think it was Dr. Rich Flores was in. And he prophesied over many people. And words were going forward. And it was a high. And then over the next few weeks into February, I looked back, we actually talked about grace for four weeks in a row. How many of you remember that we talked about grace for four weeks in a row right before March? If ever we needed grace, the ability God has for us when we can't do it on our own, it was through this season. And so it was kind of a high, it was the best of times, and then the rumblings in February, March of this thing called the coronavirus. Coming from Wuhan and I think the Hubei province of China, that's kind of what they were saying. And on March 12th, the first presumptive case was in Saskatchewan. March 13th, public gatherings, listen to this, are limited to 250 people in an aggressive measure to combat the coronavirus. The good old days of 250 people being a, <laughs> a aggressive tech tactic to combat the virus. That was on March 13th of last year. But it happened fast. March 16th, the province announces all schools will be closed effective March 20th. March 17th, eight positive cases are confirmed in Saskatchewan of COVID. Measures for protecting jobs during the pandemic, some of the plans of what they're going to do as things start to shut down. March 18th, a state of emergency. Public gatherings are capped at 50 people. Who remembers that? March 18th, bars and restaurants must operate at half capacity with two meters of distancing. Some of this two meter stuff coming out. 
Businesses start to get shut down. March 20th, mandatory self-isolation after travel. Schools close. March 25th, gatherings are limited to 10 people. The last of most businesses are forced to shut down, many of which were shut down in the weeks before. But complete lockdown and the idea of a bubble <laughs> starts forming. The worst of times. So Wednesday, March 8th, to kind of show you a bit in the midst of the worst of times, there's sort of some positives in the best of times. We had a vision team meeting. We usually have one every Wednesday morning. And Pastor Jim said, I have a feeling, Derek, you better get ready for live streaming because these numbers are it was starting to change. And it was at 250 at this point. And it might be sooner than we think. We finished that meeting at 1 o'clock by, I think, 2.30 or 3 that Wednesday. They announced that the limits were down to 50. And so we talked about, okay, how do we do this? And on Wednesday, we found out there are 50. Within uh, four days, on Sunday morning, we were streaming live from my phone, hooked up to the sound booth to, sound booth to Facebook in four days. And over the next week, I think, we had a computer attached to a camera streaming to Facebook. Within, I think, two weeks, we had a computer attached to a camera streaming to Facebook with the words on the bottom of the screen for the songs. And within less than a month, we had a computer attached to a camera streaming the words onto Facebook, YouTube, website. And during all this simultaneously happening, our church was designing an app. This is March. So now our live stream goes out on Facebook, YouTube, website, and our app. That's the best of times, because I used to say this, what would have probably taken two years took less than two months. And not only that, churches started to follow suit, and more than I've ever seen before, church content and Christian content was on social media like I've never seen. So... The worst kind of of times, but possibly in between the best of times. But over the next few months, highs and lows, the shootings of several black African American people in the United States brought a lot of attention from law enforcement and this movement, uh, Black Lives Matter, the hashtag, not, not the original group, but the movement started uh, rising up and there was lots of controversy over that and lots of, uh, I, I mean, like, I think... I heard that pastors kind of left churches and stepped away from churches because it's just the controversy around that. Even uh, President Trump and his, his election and, and Biden and, and the dissension over that. And so th those things were happening. I would even say the First Nations people in Canada, some recognition that of the racism towards them, that was sort of coming into play. Uh, continued restrictions, mandatory masks. <laughs> Contention, arguments everywhere, churches splitting, pastors leaving, but God still moving. Worship events still happening. We had red room worship in this, in this room at the back within the limits. Healing still happening. Christmas trying to get canceled, but you can't cancel the celebration of Christ's birth. And so in this, it was sort of the best of times the worst of times, and that's, of course, a quote by Charles Dickens from the novel Tale of Two Cities. And he goes on to say this, and I thought it was very fitting that he continues to say this, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredul incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. See, while this book was written about two cities, I think this could aptly apply as a tale of two 20s, 2020 and 2021. Where 2020 was the age of, or it was the worst of times, but 2021 is going to be the best of times. 2020 was the age of foolishness. 2021 is going to be the age of wisdom. Pastor Kathy talked about it last week. 2020 it was an epoch of incredulity, while 2021 will be marked with belief. 2020 was a winter of despair. 2021 is going to bring a spring of hope. 2020 was a season of darkness. 2021 is going to be a season of light. 
And for some of us, this darkness season uh, may not have just started in 2020. It may have been some years before. But some of you, your winter has gone on for far too long. For some of you, 2020 has worn you out. You may be weary. You may be tired. You will wonder if this is ever going to change. You find yourself saying, can I keep going? Can I keep doing this? But I'm here today to tell you that on January 3rd, 2021, I want to encourage you with a a passage Paul used to encourage the Galatian church in Galatians 6, verse 9 when they were dealing with similar situations. He says this in the New King James, and let us, everyone say let us. Look at your neighbor and say let me. Come on, if you're watching today online, why don't you type in there and say let me, let me see it, let me. And I encourage you, again, if you're in the service today, feel free to go on Facebook and make comments. Of course, waiting about 25 seconds or else you'll be ahead of everybody else and they'll just think you're really prophetic. But you might come across as pathetic. No, I'm just, that's the. Lorna, yes, yes, yes. 21 will be the best of times. Christy Thunderchild, let us. Kath, Pastor Kathy, hello, let me. There we go. Christy Thunderchild, let me. Thank you. Marlene, welcome. Thank you for joining with us. Jen Link. All right, and let us not grow weary while doing good. Say, doing good. Mon, if you're in the upper room, say, doing good. Better English is probably doing well, hey? (laughs) For in due season, due season, due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. We shall reap if we do not get faint. We shall reap if we do not get tired and weary and quit. Come on, look at someone and say, I am not going to lose heart. Come on, put that in the comments today. Say, I am not going to lose heart. If you're in the upper room, look at someone and say, you are not going to lose heart. If you're here today, look at someone and preach at them this morning and say, you are not going to lose heart. Can you tell I'm excited for 2021? See, I'm here to tell someone today that 2021 is going to be a different season. See, you may have been in the season, this is for City Center Church specifically, but it might fit. See, we, you may have been in a season of sowing, in a season of serving, in a season of giving. You may have been in a season of doing good, and 2020 has challenged you like it's challenged me. Uh, maybe even 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, maybe it's been a challenge and you've been given, and you've been wondering what's going on, but I'm here to tell you, your new season is due. In fact, I think it's long overdue. Some of you have some long overdue blessings that are coming your way. I think this is accurate. I heard the library has forgiven all overdue fines for books now. So I'm here to tell you the library of heaven (laughs) is, is, if there's anything overdue, they're paying it off towards you. I don't know if that analogy works. I should have just left it in my pocket. See, and I'm telling you, in the natural, this doesn't make sense because they're still talking about the slow progression out and these resurgences, but this is by the Spirit. That your season to reap, your season of blessing, your season of restoration, your season of prosperity, your season of strength, your season of grace, your season of faith, your season of wisdom, your season of favor is overdue. And I'm encouraging someone who's listening today, whoever's listening today, and you felt like you've been in the worst of times. You felt like you've been in the winter. You felt like you've been in despair. You felt like you've been having some foolish things happening to you. I'm here to tell you today, do not get weary. If you do not give up, if you do not stop believing, if you do not stop praying, if you do not stop doing good, I believe that 2021 is your due season. Come on, say it's my due season. Come on, if you're watching online on Facebook or even YouTube, we got a guy streaming in the back. If you make a comment there, he'll, he'll see it and respond to you. Come on, say, it's my due season. Come on, say it like you believe it. It's my due season. I'm going to tell you what that means. So for the next few weeks, we're going to look at and consider. Have you ever considered anything? Hmm. Ponder, think about, what does this mean? The scripture says, consider the lilies, consider the birds. 
It means to think about, okay, what's going on? And that's the word I felt for 2021 as we look at this. We're going to consider what it means to step into our due season as we look towards 2021. So, Father God, just thank you that hope and faith ignites, that, Father God, that we really grasp that 2021 is going to be our due season. In Jesus' name. Woo! So, part one of this series that we're starting called 2021, It Is Your Due Season. That's the title of this series. 2021 is your due season. Part one is consider the seasons. So we're gonna start off by considering the seasons. Ecclesiastes 3.1. Thank you, Lorianne, for saying it's my due season. Sue Nosbush, my due season. Verona, my due season. Liz Kozakowski, my due season. Thank you for joining with us today. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. Solomon, considered to be one of the wisest people to ever exist, said this. To everything there is a, if you know it, what is it? There is a? And a time for every purpose under heaven. So there's two things going on there. Season is an appointed specific time. So he's saying to everything there is a specific appointed time. But he also says this, there's a time for every purpose under heaven. That word time means the general passing of time. See, we have seasons that are specific and appointed, but we have seasons that arrive and happen just by the passing of time. So for instance, uh, we just got out of the Christmas season. So every December, we get amped up, we get ready, you go, you buy presents, we, we celebrate the, the birth, the Advent happens, uh, we celebrate the Christmas season. And that happens by the passing of time, the rotation of planets and, and different things, and, and it makes a calendar year. That happens by the passing of time. When we get into a new year, January 1st, it is the passing of time, the general passing of time that shifts us into January 1st into a new year or a new season. Are you following? So that general passing of time is the Greek word, you might have heard of it, chronos. C-H-R-O-N-O-S, where we get the word chronology or like clocks, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. It's the general passing of time. There's nothing you can really do about it. Time is set. So we're done with the Christmas season and we moved into January, a new season. See, seasons are general time things that God's instituted where we go spring, summer, fall, and winter. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. And by time passing, like I was saying, the rotation of things, I don't know much about science and all that, but rotating around the sun and different things, we get different seasons, we get different things happening, but it's the passing of time. Inevitably, if we keep passing time, we're gonna move into spring. There's really nothing you can do about it. So that's the general chronos passing of time gets us into new seasons. And we all look forward to the new season of summer. And so many of you will get up and, and hear preachers on January 1st and talking about that, talking about the new thing God's going to do. Brad referenced it in his offering message. God says, behold, I will do a new thing. And we make New Year's resolutions. Who's ever done a New Year's resolution? Who keeps it longer than like a month? <laughs> Everyone's like. <laughs> I remember Brad preached one of the best New Year's messages when he said it shouldn't be a resolution, it should be a revolution, right Brad? That stuck with me and that's when he did the reading plan and I've started reading the Bible throughout every year since. I'm pretty sure that was the message, you, revolution. But we get them up and we get excited about the new thing God's going to do. Uh, we're coming into new times, new seasons. God is about to do something new and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. God is always doing something new. But I want to say that just because it's a new season does not mean it's a due season. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean that. Just because it's a new season in terms of time, in terms of chronos, doesn't always mean it's a due season. Galatians 6, 9 says this, and let us not grow weary in doing good, for in what season, new season or due season? Due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. See, just because we've shifted into a new season via Kronos does not mean that we've moved into a due season. Someone say due season. 
Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's my due season. I'm going to make you interact today because I'm preaching and I need some excitement. I always say, I can't see your faces, so I need to hear your voices. You guys have been doing great. There we go. <laughs> the word do means, it is in the Greek, is idios, not idiots. <laughs> I-D-I-O-S, but it means this. Watch, 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 watch. It means pertaining to oneself. It means one's own, belonging to oneself. What is one's own as opposed to belonging to another? It means it's yours. It's specific to you. See, do is not just a general new. It's specific to you. And this just rose up in me as, as Brad was saying it. I think uh, this year... Usually we've made some New Year's resolutions and they don't seem to work, but I believe this year we're going to make some do year's resolutions. That is not in my notes. That was by the Spirit of God because I believe it is our due season and we're going to have some do year's resolutions where we look back and there's things that are pertaining to you, specific to you, miracles God has planned for you, blessing God has planned for you, provision God has planned for you, freedom God has planned for you and your family, specific to you and your situation. It is due and long overdue. 2021 is your due season. 2021 is your due season. Someone's going to get this this morning and leave different than they came in. So it's not just a general new. It's specific to you. So there's some things that belong to you. God has some plans that are specific for you. God has some wisdom uh, that, that planned for you. He has some favor. There's some favor that God has for you uh, that is due for you. In fact, 2020 has stored up some of uh, what is due. I think there's been some things in 2020 that were stored up that didn't happen that are now going to be overdue and are going to be received and come to fruition in 2021. So we have this Greek word chronos, which is the general passing of time for seasons. But in the Greek, there's a different word that some of you may already know and be familiar with. And when Paul talks about this in due season, the word season there is not chronos. It is kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, kairos. Many of you probably heard that word. If you haven't, write it down, mark it down, memorize it, spell it out. K-A-I-R-O-S. Kairos. See, the word season means kairos. The first definition I found was a fixed and definite time. Um, I remember when I was engaged. Before I was engaged. Uh, to my beautiful girlfriend then and wife now, Nicole, uh, it was hard sometimes to navigate seasons because there was no fixed end in mind. But the moment we got engaged and there was an end target goal, a fixed and a, a definite time, it became a moment that went from just a generality to something specific and something exciting. So I believe there's fixed and definite times for your season to arrive. And 2021 is going to be full of them. 2021 is going to be full of it. 2020 was full of it, but 2021 is going to be full of it in a whole different way. In some fixed and definite times. Some fixed and definite harvest. Some fixed and definite wisdom. Some fixed and definite grace. Some fixed and definite restoration of relationships. Some fixed and definite prosperity. Some fixed and definite health. Come on, can someone help me out this morning? It's going to be full of it. Another definition is the decisive epoch waited for. Okay, okay, wait. Let, I did not plan this, but the quote from Charles Dickens talked about an epoch of incredulity and an epoch of wisdom. I haven't used the word epoch probably ever in my life. Am I even saying it right? Epic and epoch? I probably could have done something with that, hey? But the decisive epoch waited for, so I'm like, I better look this up. What does this actually mean? It's obviously an older English type word. But epoch is a particular period of time in history or in an individual's life marked by distinctive features, events, and characteristics. It's going to come up on your screen. Oh. 
a particular period of time in history or in an individual's life marked by distinctive features, events, characteristics. See, I think, I, I believe there's been some things people have been waiting for. There's a decisive epoch designed for it. Like Dickens said, right? It was an epoch of incredulity. It was an epoch of beef, belief. See, we're coming out of a season where it was an epoch of incredulity. Do you guys know what that means? I had to look it up. I had an idea. Incredulous. Like, I can't believe this. This is what it means. The state of being unwilling or unable to believe something or admit or accept what is offered as true. Uh, if that was ever a year, that was 2020, on whatever side you fall on. I'm going to say that again. It's the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something or admit or accept what is offered as true. See, I think people's beliefs, faith, hope, everything could have been challenged in 2021. But I believe that this season is going to give way from a season where it's an epoch of incredulity, of unbelief, of uncertainty, into an epoch of a season of belief. And what does epoch mean? It means it's, it's pointed out, it's marked by distinctive features, events, and characteristics. See, 2021 is going to have some distinctive features, marks, and characteristics attached to it, and it's going to be attached to, the, to belief. You're going to have some events that are going to happen in 2021 that are going to blow you away in the natural. You're going to say, man, I didn't see this coming. Actually, I saw this coming for years and years. I believed in my heart for years and years, and 2020 felt like it was pushing it far back away, but 2021 is the year that I saw my due season. I had some marks, some distinctions, some characteristics like no other year I've had in my life before. Isn't that right, Phil? Right, Fred? Angelina? Bob, I hear you from the back. I hear you from the upper room. Come on, some distinct features, events, characteristics. This year is going to be marked with characteristics that you've been praying for, you've had your faith out for, you've had your dreams dreamt for. And watch this. This is not just someone else. This is not just City Center Church, although it is. It is not just our season. It is your season. It is your due, meaning belonging to you, specific for you, Shelly, specific for you, Tyler, specific for you, Alex and Elizabeth. Your season, Ralph and Chrissy, it is your due season in 2021. Come on, those of you in the upper room, it is your due season in 2021. Man, I can't help myself but preach. Someone say it's my due season. There we go, now we're getting it. It also means the right critical or opportune moment. I've said it this way, Kairos is an opportune moment in a moment of opportunity. It is like the culmination of a whole bunch of things coming together in one epoch. The right critical or opportune moment. It is an opportune moment in a moment of opportunity. We just had one of those on December 20th, I feel. Who knows what I'm talking about? The Bethlehem Star. The Bethlehem Star is one of those kind of almost Kairos uh, culmination, I think, of Jupiter and Saturn coming together and creating this vi version of what the Bethlehem Star was, would look like. The last time it happened, it says it was the closest great conjunction of those two planets since July 16, 1623. It's been 400 years since it's happened sort of like this. Watch this. And the first to be easily observed since March 4th, 1226. It's been 800 years since this moment has happened. This Cairo setting up for 2021, I don't think it's coincidence. And just my weird mind goes, okay, so this thing sort of happens every 400 years. 1,200, 800, 400, zero. Just wise men looking at a Bethlehem star. Anyways, that's just kind of like, hey, it's kind of cool how that sort of works. But this is a special year marked by a Kairos opportune moment at the right critical time of everything aligning. See, we think 2020 things are, are unaligning, but I'm telling you 2021 things are aligning. 
I said this early on through the coronavirus that when Jesus was on the cross, everyone in the natural looked at it and said, oh my goodness, this is terrible. Jesus has been killed. He's been crucified. Our leader is gone. And in the natural, it looked like everything was done. But guess what? In the supernatural, in the unseen realm, he was in hell kicking in the devil's teeth. He was in hell breaking the gates of hell open. He was preparing to raise again, rise again three days later. So in 2020, you may be looking at it and going, oh my goodness, everything is done. My business is done. My relationships are done. My kid is struggling with addictions. This is all going on. But I'm telling you that in the supernatural, in, in, in the unseen realm, there's things happening. There's things getting moved around. There's some Kairos moments being arranged so that 2021 can be your due season. Opportune moments, seized in a moment of opportunity. The last definition that I hadn't heard before and found very interesting, and I'm going to land on this and be done, and we're going to worship, is this, the time when things are brought to a crisis. That's in the Greek definition of kairos, right from the Strong's Concordance. The time when things are brought to crisis. Hmm. See, we just got all excited about everything God's going to do, Woo, all the good things, and then we say crisis, and everyone goes, oh, <laughs> crisis. I don't like crisis. Weren't we promised in the Bible to never go through crisis? No. And so we see crisis as sort of this negative thing in the natural, we do. COVID was and is a crisis. The job losses that came from that crisis, the suicides that probably happened from things from it, crisis, the addictions that happened, crisis. Someone assaulting a cabbie, punching him, threatening his life, stealing his car, hitting, me, hitting my car, totaling my car, and then driving off is a crisis. I, I didn't want that as a way to end 2020 and have to be dealing with SGI stuff and all this and finding receipts and everything and now getting treatments. It's just, it's a crisis. See, the word crisis actually means this. The decisive point in any event which determines which way the things will go. See, life is full of crisis, which is a decisive point in any event which determines which way things are go, life will be full of crisis or crises. But in every crisis, there's always a decision point, a critical time, a specific epoch that decides which way things are going to go. Let me give you a quick few examples. If you don't know these stories, I'm going to read the scripture. You can look them up. If you're familiar with them, you know what I'm talking about. The disciples slash Jesus in a boat trying to get to the other side of the water, and a storm comes up, and it starts rocking the boat and shifting the boat, and the disciples are in the middle of a crisis as they think they're about to drown. That's found in Mark 4, 39. Saul, on the road to Damascus, trying to persecute Christians, thinking he's doing God's will, gets confronted with this bright light and goes blind. I don't know about you, but if I got confronted with a bright light and went blind, I would consider that a crisis. The woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, 10 years, 12 years, 12. She's been dealing with medical problems in her body, and she's gone to every doctor, done everything in the natural, paid all her money to try to get a solution, and she hasn't found anything. She is in the middle of a crisis. Jesus in the wilderness, being tempted by the devil, throwing everything he had him as he's fasting for 40 days, could have been a crisis. And see, I believe this. I believe Kairos moments are coming to you or going past you possibly every day. And sometimes we look for God to be moving only in all the beautiful, blessed, nice, pleasant spaces and places and times. 
And we think Kairos is going to be found in the middle when everything's going right and the roses smell good and you're dancing through the daisies in the fields and it's so good. And God is good. Kairos, 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 come Kairos. And we look for them there. But we miss them because many times Kairos moments are found in the middle of the crisis. Come on. Come on. This is encouragement because then it means when you're going through crisis, that is not the end. That's just the decision point on how we act to that, how we deal with that that determines whether or not we see the kairos in the middle of the crisis. See, when I got in my car accident, I had a choice to make. Was this going to ruin me? Was I going to get upset at God and go, God, haven't I been serving you right? Haven't I been faithful? I'm sitting here giving my all, preaching and doing all this, and you let this happen? I can't believe it. Now i got to deal with this. I could have let that force me and work me into pain and hurt and despair and I know some crises are legitimate and some crises do hurt us but I'm telling you if we focus on that then we take that crisis and instead of shifting it to Kairos we end up letting us, letting us move us into chaos I can't believe my car this is chaotic I can't deal with it crisis is going to try to move you two ways when a crisis event occurs it will either lead us to chaos or kairos but it won't lead us to both come on I'm going to say that again when a crisis event occurs it either leads us to chaos or a kairos but it won't lead to both I'll say this let me qualify that unless you allow God to get into it because I'm going to say later, God, well, I'll just say now, God can turn your chaos into kairos. But on our own, if we, if we do this, we have a choice. What are we going to allow? Uh, what, is, what, is, what are we going to do to shift it? Are we going to allow God to shift it into a kairos moment? Or are we going to allow it to just become chaos? Music team, come on up. Thank you for staying checked in on, online. It can lead us to chaos or kairos. We have the choice. What are we going to do? Are we going to just see it as chaos? Are we going to see it as hurt? Are we going to see it as pain? Because many, many times, because all we can see is chaos, we miss the kairos. This is important. I know some of you, this may be hard to grasp, but understand that. In the situation you're going through, there is always a God-ordained opportune moment that can be a kairos, that can change everything. And we're going to sing this song, See a Victory, when we come into it here. But if you know the bridge of it goes, let me see. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yeah. You take what the enemy meant. But I think we do this with this song. You ready? I think we, we sing it or we see it like this. You take everything that was good, and you make it more good. You make it more good. You take everything that was good and you make it more good. I'm not saying he can't, but we sort of put this into it. But what he says here is, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it into good. What is that saying? You take the crisis that the enemy put in your life, God does that. The crisis that the devil's trying to do, the relationship he's trying to break up, the health thing that he's trying to put into your life, the, the, the demand on your finances that you're not sure that you're going to get through, and what the enemy meant for evil, God turns it for good. And in our context today, and we're going to sing this, you take what the enemy meant for chaos and you turn it to Kairos. You turn it to Kairos. You take what the enemy meant for chaos and you turn it to Kairos. You turn it to Kairos. Because there's some things that the devil meant to put in your life to destroy you, but God's gonna turn around and use it to define you. The chaos that you think is sitting there 
Come on, someone's got to get this this morning. I feel God's compassion in my heart. The chaos that you've been dealing with, the chaotic things in your life that you've thought are too big, too much, too overwhelming, uh, too far gone, that God is taking those things and he's turning them into Kairos moments in your life because 2021 is your due season. It's pertaining to you, your time, your appointed time for your miracle, your blessing, your provision, your wisdom, your grace, your favor. He's turning the chaos into Kairos. Chaos into Kairos. crisis is going to come and I wish I was here to tell you today you're never going to face another crisis but that's going to come I wish I was going to tell you could tell you everything is going to go perfectly from now on but I can't do that what I can tell you this is stop seeing every crisis as just chaos see COVID was a crisis but if we will consider the season if we will consider what we're going through, if we will consider the crisis, then guess what? God will always deliver the kairoses. I'm going to say that again. If we take time to consider the crisis and go, God, I don't understand everything. God, I, 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 I'm contemplating this. I don't know why I got into a car accident, but God, I know you have something better. God, I know you have a Kairos for me. I know you have a Saturn and Jupiter lining up that's going to make a Bethlehem star in my life. And I'm going to have a 2021 that is full of events and, and, and different things that are marked different than anything I've ever had in my life before, God. You deliver the Kairoses in due time, in due season 2021 is your season come on Turn it to Kairos. Turn it to Kairos. Kairos. God is shifting some stuff. Come on, come on, right now. I believe it in the spirit realm. God is shifting some chaos that you've been going through in, the, in your lives. And he's turning it into Kairos moments. He's designing some things for you. As we sit in worship, as we sit in praise, God is putting things together for your 2021.